So hi everyone, my name is Will, and as David said, today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about dirt. Um, now I have to say that I feel a little bit strange to be the one on the stage telling you the story because nothing in my life up to this point ever suggested that I'd be talking about dirt. Um, when I was a kid, I had much bigger plans for myself. Um, as a child, I dreamed about being an astronaut. I wanted to build rocket ships to explore strange new worlds and make contact with alien life. That was my dream. So uh, I studied things like physics, computing as a kid, and later actually worked on telecommunications at NASA. Um, my thinking then was the Earth is such a tiny spot on the cosmic scale. Why do we bother studying anything down here when there's so much more to see up there? But over time, I realized that looking farther and farther away is not necessarily as interesting as simply looking closer. So I left my life in California. I decided to build my own tech company named QED. And we try to focus on problems that are a little more down to earth. And today, I'd like to tell you guys that if you're searching for mystery, there's actually no need to leave this planet or even to leave your doorstep because one of the greatest mysteries of this universe is literally right underneath your feet. And that mystery is the soil, the dirt we walk on every single day. Although this soil is only a one meter thin layer of the Earth's crust, all living things depend on that layer to survive. First of all, the soil is our reservoir for storing and moving all the nutrients, liquids, and gases needed for life, about 90% of all the water that's used for agricultural food productions in the soil, as well as 2,300 gigatons of organic carbon. Now that soil organic carbon is generated through one of nature's greatest performances. At this very moment beneath your feet, there's a nasty orchestra of earthworms, insects, snails, bacteria, and fungi furiously working beneath our feet, decomposing all the dead stuff underneath us into the nutrients and minerals that can be accessible to the next generation. Therefore, one could say that soil is the resurrecting force that transforms death into life. And yet, while we have depended on soil since the beginning of civilization, we still know surprisingly little about it. For example, few can tell us what exactly soil is. Now, we know that good soil looks and feels like this dark brown, spongy cake that smells fresh, right? But the exact composition of that cake is still a mystery. After all, a single teaspoon of soil contains more distinct microbes in it than all the humans on planet Earth. So it's a really complicated substance. Another basic thing that we don't know is what's called the soil nutrient budget. Underneath our feet, what is the current level of acidity, carbon, nitrogen, and other nutrients beneath us? We need to know that because whenever you grow food, you extract these nutrients from the soil as a kind of price that you have to pay. And if we're gonna pay back our debt, we need to put those nutrients back into the soil somehow. Unless you keep the nutrient budget balanced, farmers are not gonna be able to continue producing the food that we eat. And then lastly, when it comes to food security or financial security, the world has really yet to appreciate the true value of soil. Soil is simply one of the most valuable resources of any nation. It sustains $4 billion of agricultural products worldwide every year. And from history, we know that whenever a nation loses its soil fertility, it will collapse. So in agriculture, we're just facing this huge problem of how do you measure soil and also plant health across continents. You could call it yet another big data problem. But in ag, the big data problem is always, where is the data, right? So that's why the Africa Soil Information Service, or AFSIS, was created back in 2009. And AFSIS aims to develop clever strategies to collect missing data about the soils of Africa. Now, why Africa? Well, we focus on Africa because the future of Africa's food security depends crucially on its agricultural growth. And we know that Africa's soils are also suffering the most right now from widespread nutrient depletion and from erosion. Now, this project has been an enormous challenge requiring the collaboration of many international institutions like the ones you see here, as well as the national labs in various countries. We definitely can't say that we solved this problem, but I just wanna share a simplified story about what we've done so far. Okay, so to start, 
To measure the soil, we actually have to return to space. Um, where should you take these kinds of measurements? It's really expensive to go out there and collect soil, right? And so you only want to collect soil measurements in places that actually matter to farmers, where you have some croplands and you have some houses. So if you want to find those kinds of places efficiently, we built an app called GeoSurvey. And this is a crowdsourcing software for analyzing satellite imagery. So as you can see, users are shown random maps of the Earth, and they can trace their mouse or their finger on a tablet to trace all the croplands and the houses and the forests of Africa and worldwide. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, are you just manually marking this up across the whole world? No. We, we trained the computer with enough examples to do this for us. So thanks to millions of submissions sent to GeoSurvey, we can see uh, the computer automatically marking up entire countries as shown here. So armed with these kinds of maps, now we have a strategic game plan for places that our field teams should target to most efficiently collect the soil. Uh, our partners in Tanzania, Ghana, Ethiopia have spent countless hours in the field traversing deserts, crossing rivers, scaling mountains, all for the sake of collecting dirt. Uh, here you can see one of our staff in Tanzania driving an auger into the ground to extract a core of dirt that's then bagged, barcoded, and georeferenced with our mobile apps. In fact, everything we try to do with APSIS has a 100% digital data workflow. So then we have to bring those soils back to the lab for processing. Now, traditionally, soil scientists use a, a, a process that's called wet chemistry. And if you're running a national survey, that can easily cost you millions of dollars to do. So to make this more affordable, we use machines like this, infrared spectrometers, which are 10 times cheaper and only run on the cost of electricity. What they do is they shine infrared light on the soil, and then by measuring the reflections of that light, surprisingly, we can predict certain nutrients quite well. So for the nerds in the audience, I have some regression plots that show the goodness of our predictions for certain nutrients like pH, nitrogen, and carbon. And so what we're seeing here are the predicted values um, using the dry chemistry method versus the traditional wet chemistry method. Now, the increased affordability of this kind of method allows us to collect much more data than previously available. If you added up all the soil chemistry data collected in Africa prior to the year 2000, it only adds up to around 18,000 samples, as shown in this graph. But then, thanks to AFSIS uh, and these kinds of efforts over the past few years, we've been already been able to collect much more data, and that can be then interpolated to produce these kinds of nutrient concentration maps of carbon at a large scale. So that's a really quick summary of the kind of interesting work that we've been doing with dirt. But uh, this is really not done. It's only a first step, and we want your help, everyone in this audience, to make the giant leap. Um, I'd like to close with two challenges that I'd like the next generation of scientists, technology, uh, engineers, and mathematicians to solve. The first challenge is about advocacy. We need governments to take a renewed interest in soil. Okay? Why? Well, most of the world's poorest people are employed in agriculture. Their whole livelihood the hinges on the fertility of that soil. And they do the best they can with the tools that they have, but these farmers can't control a lot of things, like changes to their entire landscape or what kinds of agricultural inputs and fertilizers they can access. But if we use soil data, governments can design soil conservation efforts. They can guide the private sector to develop the right fertilizers for improving farmer yields and farmer incomes. And my second challenge out there is for the technologists. If we want to build really high accuracy maps of soil and plant health, we're going to need a lot, 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 lot more data. And that's going to require serious moonshot innovation. So first of all, it's really expensive right now to be collecting soil samples, shipping them from the field to the lab. And secondly, while the instruments we've been using are cheaper than before, they're still a bit too expensive and delicate for many rural and remote areas. So if we're going to move forward, I suggest we channel this punk science movement to develop low-cost handheld sensors that can get everybody involved with science. So on the screen and in my hand, we have some examples of homemade spectrometers from the public lab at CERN, as also at my company, QED. So this thing is made from components that you guys all know about. PVC pipes, I got a razor blade in here, um, AA batteries. Raspberry Pi, DVDs for diffraction gratings, and of course, you've all got this supercomputer sitting in your pocket, which interfaces to produce an instant spectrogram. So we have a very powerful device at minimal cost. 
Um, so I challenge the next generation to do better than us and make us even cheaper uh, and more scalable to collect data at scale. So, no, I'm not done. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's my talk about soil, the big data problem that's hidden underneath your feet. I just wanted to end with one of my favorite quotations, uh, passed down from another engineer named Bill down to me. In God we trust, but all others must bring data. Thank you. <laughs>